Olá, Deus te abençoe. Hello, God bless you. Thank God. Welcome to the Life Change Today program. Thank you so much for being there. And may God bless you very much. Your home, your family, your weekend. May you have an amazing schedule with your blessed family is starting with the table. Go to the table. Read the scriptures. Teach your children principles and values of the kingdom. Lead them. Start children off on the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. In Jesus' name. And acquire to your life health habits. Take care of your health. Remember that God is responsible for the healing, not for the health. I must take care of my health. God takes care of healing. So have health habits for you, for your family. Look, my people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns. Broken cisterns that can't hold water. And the Lord called it sins to forsake him, to abandon him. When someone's abandoned him, you can be sure that they will try projects on flesh. And sometimes the person doesn't see it, doesn't realize it. If they don't seek for this consciousness, they get distracted, a little more distracted. They get out, they leave, leave. That's why the Bible says that in their heart, in their heart, Israel turned back, returned to Egypt. And I have seen not just a few people who in their heart, they, they stayed in the church, but in their heart, they have already returned to the world until the moment that the time comes and they make foolish things. How many people who were with us talking about life change ministry, they were with us in the process, but they gave up on the process. It happens a lot. People who even were with us for a time, they made part of moments, important moments and process, but they gave up and they started to get distracted and they allowed a feeling to enter what is very sad, right? Every time I see Someone who got, has a, a beautiful project, he has it because we see that if the person aligned themselves, God could do it. But I have seen people, but I saw people wasting, losing God's projects because of wounds that weren't treated and a wound that isn't treated, you can know, certainly know, that is the laws of destiny. Because a person full of wounds, they will act, they will make decisions based on the wound, and that's when they will have, they will get into trouble. Because if they have a wound that wasn't treated, for example, a wound of rejection, they will see rejection in everything. Wherever they look, they will see 
rejection, and they will make decisions based on this vision, on this point of view, this perspective. Did you get it? And that's when they will they will ruin because they will go to wrong courses. They will turn. They will follow courses, paths that will steal their life. This is serious, my dear. People who are hurt hurt others. People who have a root of rejection and they don't treat it. They they will make decisions and make more decisions based on offense, rejection, criticism, a criticism based on a loss, when they should be making decisions based on faith, not by feelings, because the righteous shall live by faith and not by feelings. But we can see a person who doesn't treat the wound, who doesn't seek the Holy Spirit's help, answering based according to that wound, according to that what they are feeling. So I'm feeling rejected. Look what a crazy thing. I'm feeling rejected. That's over. That's okay. Now they start to have a behavior that usually it will really make them to be rejected. They will be really reje rejected because they have the behavior of someone who feels rejected and it will only get worse. It will, they will make foolish decisions based on a feeling that maybe just exists inside of them. Nobody's rejecting them, but they are seeing it. I have already seen there are people who, because they were going through a, a financial situation, a difficult financial situation, they began to see distances that didn't exist. Rejection that didn't exist. That was happening inside of the person. That was, those were their complexes, their insecurities. In other words, wounds that never were treated. So if we start to only give place to feelings, there isn't place to faith. So what will you do? You will abandon it. And often, It's not necessarily physical, but in your heart. We are not hungry for a guy anymore. And then you run away. And this escape leads you to dig your own cisterns, your own, your own projects. When a person is not okay, they are not living a good moment, Instead of seeking why, the reason why, to work on it, what many times it is the distance from God, the lack of alignment with Him. No, now they are there groaning, feelings, speaking, talking about the topic. Sometimes the couple, one start to poison another. And then they start to make plans of escape, to escape, of defeat. Why? Because if I make a decision misaligned with God, oh, I will leave. Oh, I will run away. Oh, I'm not working on it. I'm not. I'll do something else. I need to know if these are my feelings, a spirit of escape or if God is really on it. Is God in it? Is God in it? Or they are my feelings. It's my feelings. No, because when I am in such a place, it will be like this and like that. I don't know. If God commands me, if God sends me to a certain place, I have a word from God. 
I have God's approval. I'm, I'm securing God. Do you remember that Peter left and he didn't walk on the waters. He walked on a word. He had a word. He said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you. So come. So I have a come. But if I don't have a come, how will I leave the ship? If the Lord didn't say come, how will I leave it? I need to have a word from God. Oh, because I want to do something. And if God doesn't have it for me now? And if what is happening is not related to God, but with the feeling, feelings, anxiety, restlessness, on this moment, based on this moment, I have already seen people cutting the process in the middle, giving up on what God had for them. They gave up on God's projects for their lives. Why? Because they didn't want to go through what they had to go through. Inside, I just said, inside of, inside of the work, how many people who also made part of the process of, of a good part of the process and they gave up on the process? And in the moment, today I have people who enjoy a wonderful outcome with us, with all of us, because they resist on the process. There aren't many. They are just a few to tell the truth, but they resisted. And I think how many people that if they are in the past, they had resisted, they could be living in a privileged situation, enjoying the outcomes, but They gave up. And how many today they are making part of the process for the growth, to the growth, to the progress, for new conquests of territories and places. If they resist, they, they, will, they will have a time to enjoy it. But unfortunately, we see that It's not everybody who remains steadfast. There is a moment when they give up and they seek, they give up on God's projects for their lives and they seek, they, they seek their own projects. They forsake the Lord, they abandon the Lord and they go to dig their, their own cisterns and cisterns that don't hold water. It means, what is the purpose of a well that doesn't have water? A project that doesn't bear fruits, doesn't have results. A company that doesn't bear fruits, results, produce results. And if I am far from God's project, digging my own cisterns, my project, I'll do it in my own way, the way I want it. Many times, this way is based on a feeling, on a wound, right? Oh, I'm feeling rejected. Now you will see. I will leave and I will do it. I'll do this and that. And that's it. It was based on pride, arrogance, and they learned the hard way. I have seen it a lot. I have already seen it a lot. How many times I cried in prayers, showing to God, Lord, awaken that person. Don't allow them to lose their destiny. I've seen people with a bright future who simply, just like Israel, before the promised land, they prefer to return. No, we're going back. This is not possible. 
and they lost the the calling, the portal, because later they they said, "No, now we'll go." And what did happen? Moses said, "Now it's too late. Now it's too late. There's no use for you to move, because God isn't with you." So we know that there is a time that we have grace to do, anointing to do, and we can lose the portal that is opened. We know that if we don't know the Lord, we can create a God similar to us. And then I might deceive myself and think it's God, but it's not God. If I don't work, if I don't seek God's help to heal these wounds, I may I may make decisions, I can make decisions, change my destiny based on a feeling. People, I have already seen children groaning because of decisions, wrong decisions that their parents made. Children groaning, groaning. Parents who greatly hindered their children's lives because your decisions will change. Your destiny will affect people who are around you. But the person self-centered, full of selfishness, self-centered, it's what I feel, right? What I want, what I think I want, I think, oh, because they didn't, oh, because they didn't treat me well, because they didn't give me, they didn't give me what I wanted, oh, because I think, I think this, I think that, so I'll go, now I'll go, based on an impulse, emotional impulse, full of wrath, blind, because blind of offense, revolt, feelings. They abandoned the purpose, they abandoned the calling, and they abandoned the Lord, abandoned the Lord, and they are saying, no, I'm not abandoning the Lord. God is with me. God knows my heart. God understands me. I don't have to handle it. Is it? I don't have to put up with this. Do I? Let me tell you something. David was tested twice, having the opportunity to kill Saul, and he didn't make it because he understood that it didn't come from God. The world was saying, oh, you have to do it. Many times God will use your leader, your boss, to take something out of you, to know what is inside of your heart. Did you know it? Did you know it? Do you remember when Eli thought that Hannah was drunk? That was a test for Anna. What came out of her? Reverence. Fear of the Lord. Do you remember that the Bible says that in that days, Hophni and Phineas, the corrupt and adulterous sons of Eli were priests? And not even because of this, Elkanah stopped going to worship the Lord with his whole family. What came out of them? Fear of the Lord above everything. So sometimes the Lord will allow situations to know what is inside of our heart. Deuteronomy 8. He will test us. Sometimes He will lead us to know what is inside of our hearts. And unfortunately, what comes out from some people are pride, arrogance, questioning, and decisions, and foolish decisions that the person will regret there in the future because there are isn't just a few people who, after many years, many years later, after taking totally wrong courses when they were tired because they didn't know what they would do with their lives anymore, they understood, I'll have to go back to the place that I shouldn't have left 
where God planted me, I'll have to return and start doing again. I'll have to to humble myself, to humiliate myself. If I want to have just, if I want to have a, a little bit of peace in this time, this time I still have a life. Enough. Humble yourself. Listen what the Spirit is speaking to you. That maybe, maybe you are not paying attention that you have already forsaken the Lord in your heart. You're not listening to Him. You're not hungry for Him. You are listening to your, you're listening to your emotions, feelings, wounds. And maybe you are taking risks, taking risks in projects that are broken cisterns. You won't be fulfilled. You might end up getting burned and God is talking to you. Hey, you're running away. You're making decisions on flesh. Based on flesh. What is grounding these decisions are feelings and, and bad feelings. The devil is using these feelings to make you to make decisions that will change your destiny. Listen to the voice of the Spirit. In Jesus' name, stop. Be quiet. Before doing anything, stop. Pray to God. Open a fast. Don't make any decision in a moment of great emotion. Be quiet. Leave a little bit. Humble yourself. Remember everything God have already done has already done. Start to listen. Words that have already moved, impacted you before in the past. Ask for help. Cry out for the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, don't allow me to make any decision, not even one decision based on feelings, wounds. Don't allow me, Lord. Lord, may I forsake you in my heart and I'm blind. Look what the Lord is look what the Lord said. These people have eyes but they don't see. They have ears but they don't listen they don't hear and the heart became sensitive it can happen the bible speaks of a seared conscience conscience we need to consider everything and stop lord give me consciousness lord give me light turn my darkness into light lord maybe my problem is pride Maybe your whole problem is pride because God opposes himself to the proud one. You're blaming people. You're blaming maybe the place where you are. You burn things from people and God himself is opposing himself to you and saying, you won't have, I won't let anybody give what you want. Maybe you are there and you want someone to give to you and God isn't allowing it to work on this pride. He's saying you need to humble yourself. Humble yourself. Because I won't. I won't give what you want and I won't allow anybody to give what you want. That's the time. You shall not go beyond this point. Many times God will place his hand on our chest and say, you shall not go beyond this point. God, give grace, God gives grace to the humble ones, greater grace, but he opposes himself and prostrate the proud ones. Hey, maybe the great problem of your life is this root of rejection. This pride, this lack of identity, these complexes, this insecurity, and then you try to and then you try to camouflage all this with an appearance of being secure 
a being, you know, that knows and that's okay. And the Lord is saying, stop with it. Humble yourself fast and that's it. And you'll have victory. Humble yourself. Listen to God. Don't make the foolish decision to go far and then you'll have to come back to return if you want to have peace in your life. In Jesus' name, pay attention. Maybe. Look how many times I have already said maybe to make you think. God has been allowing situations to know who you are, to know what is inside of your heart and what is coming out is only confirming that you don't have any structure to Him to give more, to, to trust more. I believe that God's projects with you are great. But today, maybe you are... Letting clear to God that you don't have the character to handle more. You don't have enough structure, maturity, firmness, faith, humbleness to have more. You don't have it. What is coming out is only confirming. You can't. If you don't change, it won't come. And what I always say is, if nothing changes, nothing will change. Isn't written in Job that no thousand things the Lord will be able to do if I don't align myself with Him? Listen to the voice of the Spirit. Return to the Lord. Turn back to the Lord. And don't make the mistake of venturing into failed projects that God isn't there. To dig broken cisterns that won't hold blessings and won't lead you anywhere. May the Spirit illuminate your understanding because this program is God saying all the time for you, I love you. And I don't want you to miss your life, your destiny. If you believe, desire, and want to pray with me, prepare something you want to receive prayer for. I'll be right back to pray with you. Senhor, meu Deus e meu Pai. Lord, my God and my Father, I pray for a dear, beloved life that is with me, and I ask may this word have really transformed our people, each person who prays with me. May their level of consciousness have been raised, increased, of the level of, of fear. May they have really opened themselves to your voice. May they listen to your voice. May they humble themselves and may they hold your board. May they submit, humbly submit, aligning to the directions that you are given and they will have victory. Bless homes, families, all who sent their prayer requests and I consecrate everything and I take possession of a new time of full of joy, restoration, understanding and brokenness in Jesus name I bless my friends and fellow sowers I prophesy the gift of wealth prosperity and anointing of conquest and anointing and anointing of ten times more raise more sowers because we need them and wherever this program is reaching may this word have filled each person and transformed their heart vision, dear life forever. I ask for your blessing. I give my blessing and I thank you so much for everything. Amen. 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 Thank God. The Life Helpline phone number is 5511-3296-9449. We're located at 995 Taquari Street in Sao Paulo, Brazil. It's where we are. And tomorrow at 9, we'll have the first fruit service for the beloved family of God. In all our temples, take your family, bring a guest. It is always a pleasure to have you here. It is a pleasure to serve. And if the Lord Jesus doesn't come back, I will continue here talking about life and life change. Have a nice day. Amen.
dia 7 de julho, às 9 horas, início do propósito de fé dos 52 dias para a restauração da sua vida com a Santa Ceia do Senhor. O muro ficou pronto em 52 dias. Quando todos os nossos inimigos souberam disso, todas as nações vizinhas ficaram atemorizadas e com orgulho ferido, pois perceberam que essa obra havia sido executada com a ajuda de nosso Deus. O que precisa ser restaurado em sua vida? A família? As finanças? A saúde? A vida espiritual? O Ministério Mudança de Vida dará a grande largada de fé pelo clamor da restauração da sua vida. 52 dias de fé, perseverança, de busca e clamor ao Deus vivo pela restauração da vida de todo aquele que crê.